only my, you know, third and hopefully not last film. Whatever, about a woman who's a snake. And I'm 40 and single. That's cool. It's my own baggage. I've been late in like 400 years. David Lynch is one of the most polarizing directors of Hollywood, a creator whose eccentric creations and unique working style has created a huge and loyal fan base, and has also inadvertently produced a lot of anecdotes regarding his intense filmmaking style and several accounts of interesting experiences on film sets. Nothing, however, is as sinister as what you would hear about Stanley Kubrick or David O. Russell. This, however, is not about David Lynch, the director of the original Dune, who might be punching the air seeing the reception of the Denny well enough creation, but his daughter, Jennifer Lynch. Can you believe that this creator who is actively working in the Hollywood ecosystem currently was commissioned to direct a Nagin film in 2010, starring Malika Shiravat that turned out to become a production disaster? I don't have things locked, I don't have actors for certain things. Nobody, like, I've been told I have certain things and I don't. While I have to tell you that this forgotten chapter of Indian film history is best left in the archives, I had no choice but to revisit it. What intrigued me the most is that the behind the scenes of the film highlighted several hurdles the production faced as Jennifer Lynch goes through a midlife existential crisis captured in probably one of the most craziest Indian film documentaries available on Tubi TV titled Despite the Gods. It's just so absurd I'm making a movie about a snake that turns into a woman who turns into a snake. I got a piece of over there with a Pamela Anderson shirt on it and I'm having a nervous breakdown because like I can't have fun with it it's absurd an insight into the sheer perseverance that is required to improvise with the facilities available in India and how an individual cushioned with most systems being streamlined finds themselves like a headless chicken in the city and industry of Mumbai you know the chop 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 of India is not what Jen 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 wants to do. The documentary is also a clear indicator of when the premise and concept of the film is faulty at its inception. There is no saving it no matter how many proficient technicians hop on the project. The concept of the Ichadari Nagin has been hugely popular in Indian culture, finding its place in entertainment across decades. While most millennials and Gen Z would equate these themes of a vengeful snake taking revenge against those who are wronged in society to the hugely popular colour show Nagin that had made several actors reach unprecedented popularity, fully becoming a regular feature of Indian households drawing room viewing before Anupama took over, films also have ventured into focusing on such themes especially during the 70s and 80s and were hugely popular, Sri Devi taking more or less the mantle of the ultimate Nagin. Nothing however tops the cringe favourite Jani Dushman that featured some of the most romantic themes with a snake in a previous life. These elements were also integrated into fictional characters of Raj comics like that of Nagraj and Shakti. However, with the sensibilities of audiences today, it's tough for any maker to transform these themes that are usually equated to being unintentionally funny into a compelling and eerie horror thriller. This was precisely what was attempted in the 2010 Jennifer Lynch-directed film Hiss, a movie based on a man suffering from stage 3 cancer in a dire condition about to die any minute but having the sole purpose of capturing a Nagmani that will presumably grant him immortality. He captures the Nagin's lover to use him as bait to lure her and what transpires is a shape-shifting Malika Shirabat who travels from Mumbai to Kerala in search of her man. Yes, this terribly produced, directed and written film had disaster written all over it from the word go. Come on, bitch. The documentary presents Jennifer Lynch in a constant state of panic and anxiety in every frame as she is accompanied by her younger daughter and she deals with the heat, humidity and constant noise of traffic in her Mumbai apartment.
Jennifer is found to be chain smoking, hoping, wishing and praying that any process can be streamlined and is found to be worried even in the concept of the film translating into a cohesive structure. While the producer who constantly accompanies her Govind wants to guide her on the organized chaos that exists in India, Jennifer for most of the making of the film is adamant to work in her way and at her leisure, not acknowledging the lack of funds the film is working with. You're screwing up the scenes. If you can't hack it, quit. What's also strikingly obvious is the wide gaze with which she approaches the project and the country, being dismissive of the money riding on the project, always bringing her daughter along on sets and tending to her slightest inconvenience. Through most of the filmmaking process found in the documentary, Jennifer is found to almost having given up, even insulting her lead actor Malika Sharawat while she is on set, with makeup and prosthetics giving everything to the role. The documentary aside, the film is a colossal mess, so much so that even a legend like Irfan Khan can't revive it from drowning. The final cut provided by Jennifer was presumably so poor that the production had to take the reins of the final edit themselves. A 1 hour 33 minute film turned out to be a colossal disaster financially and after watching the film I am not surprised. The film barely has cohesion, just a random snippet of scenes jumbled up together as a scantily clad Malika Sharawat pretends to be a snake looking for her lover. The case of foreign actors terribly acting continues even in this film. A chronically ill man seeking for immortality should be bone chilling, but it's nothing short of embarrassing, especially the quality of their dialogue delivery and acting. The bootleg VFX is actually half of the film's problems. The real issue is the depravity that the makers try to showcase. Every frame of his is dirty, boasting of dilapidated buildings, filthy streets, and every Indian man other than the investigating officer playing a barbarian. Random chase scenes present dead carcasses of chickens on the floor and a toddler pooping, almost as if to double down on what Slumdog Millionaire showcased. India only being representative of a dirty, polluted, hazy and corrupt world devoid of any morals. The Indians in the first frame of his are presented as attempted to assault the Nagin. The others keep on reiterating that all they live for is money. Every frame is saturated with blood and muck, making me sick through several portions because I haven't seen a more ugly looking film in a long time. Not Anurag Kashyap ugly good. Hell, he can even make Pahar Ganj in Dev D also look like a cool hipster town. But this is just dingy and decrepit. The film's tonality is completely off. It has jump cuts to sex scenes when murder looms around the corner. It has women who identify their son-in-laws as ugly obese women, a Nagin looking exactly like me after Bada Chicken, and a villain that has dialogues which can give Kanti Shah's creativity competition. Come on, come on, goddess. Apne lover ko bacha lo. Toda sa. It's awkward to see Malika Sharawat be this sensual animal, riding up on a pole in search for the heat emanating from a street lamp, or pushing her bum out as she becomes the final form of the Nagin. While Jennifer, the creator herself, is scrapping on her own product, constantly projecting the blame on the circumstances and reminding us the shit show from the onset, in every frame of the documentary you see Malika give her heart and soul to the project. The documentary acted as a reminder to me of just the insane and somewhat inhumane conditions in which our creators make films and how the fate of these products are dictated within a mere three days. The weeks and months of turmoil, blood, sweat and tears are almost immaterial on a Monday when it crashes and burns. More than anything else, it also clearly indicates that India is a different beast altogether. It might be a case of self-reflection too on how our processes are still stuck in the dark ages. Well, it's probably just reflective of our disparities in income across classes and how we still manage to persevere despite these outcomes. More than anything else, the documentary provided me an insight into the human condition of an individual absolutely crumbling, her own insecurities manifesting into frustration and anger towards everything around her, only for her to completely dissociate from something which was essentially her baby. काम करो चुप रहो काम करो दिमाग मरकाओ